Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a very elegant way to implement deletion of data for your database in .NET. Now, this concept is not a new technique and it's not .NET specific. The concept is called soft deletes and the idea is that you don't actually delete the data from the database. Instead, you just mark the row or the entity as deleted and then anything that selects it or interacts with it says that, hey, is that item marked as deleted? If it's yes, then it's as good as non-existent for the user. Now, the benefits for this can be many. The biggest one being you can actually roll back the data and re-enable it without having to worry about regenerating the data or finding where it came from in the first place. It's a very good way to roll things back. And it has some pretty, pretty good performance benefits as well. In this video, I'm going to show you a really cool way to implement it as well. I'll show you how you can optimize its performance as well. Don't worry about the fact that you leave the data in the database. It's actually really, really useful. And many databases, like for example, Elasticsearch, by default, when you say delete, they don't actually delete the data because they're used as part of the index. So the concept is very universal and it's how most companies and most businesses do things. So let me show what I have here. I have this Movies API. It has controllers. It's a very basic CRUD API. All you do is you create a movie, get a movie, get all movies, update a movie or delete a movie. And the way we delete a movie over here, as you're going to see, is we inject the entity framework app DB context, which I created over here. And yes, this video will use entity framework because it allows us to implement it in a very, very, very elegant way. But you can implement the same thing using Dapper. It's just that for this use case, I really, really love the EF technique. So I'm going to show that. Now, if I just go ahead and run this API, as you're going to see, and by the way, I'm using SQLite for this. So my database is here. And by the way, if you want to grab the code, it's in the description down below. Click that link and get it for free. So the API is running and I can say create the movie Nick the Greek from 2012. So we're going to go ahead and create it. Here we go. Then I get the ID. I can go and just get the movie from ID. So I can say return it and I get it back. I can say give me all the movies in the database and I get it back. And then I can say just deleted and I'm going to say, OK, it's deleted. Or I can say delete again, and because it's already deleted, I get a 404 not found. Very basic CRUD API stuff. Now, this is just deleting the entry. I press delete, and as you can see over here, the data does not exist. The first thing we want to do is we actually want to add two properties or two columns for what we're storing. This is universal. It's not just a SQL thing. If you're using NoSQL database, if you're using anything, the idea is the same. Many people will tell you that you only need one field and that is the is deleted field but the truth is you shouldn't just have one you should have two so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a public interface called i soft deletable and this will have the two properties and that's not how you spell soft and this will have the two properties that i want to have all my deletable or soft deletable entities carry on uh, and that is the boolean is deleted and then the date time, and that should be nullable because it might not be deleted, called deleted at UTC. And I'm going to store when this entity was deleted. Very, very important. And many, many projects miss that. You should have that. It will really make dealing with this entity very, very easy because you know when it was deleted. And by the way, many systems actually use just this and they don't even have the is deleted flag. So basically you say, if this value is null, then it's not deleted. If it is not null, then assume that it's deleted. I'll explain why we have both properties here. It's a bit of an optimization and a bit of a limitation. But the first thing I want to do is implement I soft deletable over here and implement the two properties. Here we go. And that's all I need to change on my model. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the app DB context over here and I'm going to override the on model creating method and i can customize a few things about my movie here now if you're not familiar with empty framework core we actually have an eight hour course on dome train we just launched a seven day trial and part of the 10 courses you get for free during this trial is the ef course i'm going to put a link in the description you can cancel any time but if you decide that it's for you you can just keep your subscription so here i can actually customize a few things about my movie now most things come from attributes. So for example, determining that the key is the ID comes from here, but I can define some things about this entity 
in the AppDB context. Now, before I do that, I want to show you what happens when I just implement the movie service updates that I need to do. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying that if I want to delete, I'm going to say where the ID is this, execute delete async. So anything that matches this query, just use the execute delete async method, build the query and just delete all the entities that match this without having to read them all first. It's a very efficient thing that was added in .NET 7. Now in our case, that's not what we want to do. So we don't actually want to delete anything. We want to update. So what I'm going to do is delete this second part and say that get the movies where the ID is that and we're only going to have one because that's the primary key and also where the is deleted flag is false. So we're going to make the query more efficient. If it's already deleted, you don't need to delete anything. And in this case, what you need to do is say execute update async. And we're going to use the Lambda expression here to say set the property. And we're going to select the property we want to set. So the property is the is deleted. And we're going to set that to true. So I can do that over here. And the other thing I need to set, let me just expand this so you can see. So the other thing I need to set is set property deleted at UTC and say date time dot UTC. Now, so all delete is going to do is check if this matches and if it does update it. So in terms of my delete functionality, this is all I need to do. Now, you might be thinking that, well, now Nick, you have to go in here and every time the data is read, you have to go and say, db.movies and this should not be find async anymore it should be first or default async because now we need to match not only on the id matching the id but also that it is not deleted because if it is deleted if it's marked as deleted you want to return it as a null as a not found but that's not what we're going to do because EF Core has a more efficient and elegant way to do this so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the app db context and we're going to say model builder dot entity and we're going to say the entity is the movie and we're going to say has query filter that is called a global query filter it's a feature of ef core extremely powerful so we're going to have a de facto a default query on top of anything else we query when we select for that data and we're going to say that if the data is not deleted then return it. If it is marked as deleted, then do nothing about it. Don't return it. And now with all that in place, I'm going to go ahead and say added delete and add the migration. I'm going to quickly let that run. And then I'm going to run the migrations or update the database. So now my table has been updated, as you can see over here. If I just refresh, we have deleted at UTC and is deleted. So now if I go over here and I run this API, watch what happens. Again, my queries in the select don't have any filter. They are still the same. So I'm going to go back here and say, create a movie. The movie, in fact, has been created. I'm going to get the ID. If I refresh the table over here, as you can see, I have the deleted as false. Zero represents false over here. And then the rest of the data. And if I go back to Insomnia, I can say, get the movie with this ID. And as you're going to see, if I can spell this correctly, as you're going to see, the data is returned. And if I say get all movies, the data is again returned. Now, if I say delete movie, what you'll see is that the item was in fact deleted and we get an OK. And if I say delete again, we're getting a 404. It doesn't exist. And if I go to get that movie, again, 404 doesn't exist. Get all movies, 404 doesn't exist. That's the global query filter kicking in not allowing this data to be retrieved. But if I refresh the table over here, what you're going to see is that the thing is just soft deleted. The data still exists and the deleted add UTC column tells me when it was deleted. You can add more auditing data to know who deleted it and why if you want to. But as a bare minimum, this will give you enough information to implement soft deletes. Now, the problem you might think you have is that well, now, Nick, I have this query that is being attached to everything and I'm wondering how will this affect performance? How can I, you know, as the data grows, how can I make sure that this will perform well? And what you can do is you can add a filtered index. So what I can do over here is I can say model builder dot entity movie and I can say has index on the is deleted column and that index has a filter, which is the is deleted equals zero filter and of course go ahead and say that hey i just added delete filter i can go ahead this will now be picked up i'm gonna have a migration and i'll say updated so my database will now be updated 
to include this. Here we go, all done. So this will guarantee that my query performance will be very, very good. On top of that, many people ask, okay, but what if I want to ignore the query filter for some specific reason? If I have a, a method that also needs to include the soft deleted data, how can I do that? Well, you can say ignore query filters and then you can chain your filtering. So you can say first or default on the ID or whatever, and this will allow you to get the data ignoring the query filters. For example, if I add it here to the to list async and I go and I run this, if I use the get endpoint, get by ID as you're going to see over here, well, actually I have to create the movie first, but if I just created, get the ID, if I say get movie, paste this and I say send, this is returned because it exists. If I now delete it, then as you're going to see, I'm not going to get in the get, but in the get all movies, I have the ignore the filter. And as you can see, now it is being returned. In fact, both of them are being returned because they're being ignored. If I just delete this and I save and I hot reload and I go back and I say send, they don't exist. So if you want to ignore it, you have the ability to do that. It's a very elegant way, in my opinion, to implement the feature and you can use it in any database you want. As always, the code is in the description down below, but no wonder from you. What do you think about soft deletes and do you have another approach to deal with this scenario? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you first video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.